What is sinus surgery? The so-called sinusotomy. Is there sinus surgery? Many people do not even know that there is sinus surgery. So, if you arrived here on the channel, subscribe, activate the notifications, that we have a lot of interesting content about otorhinolaryngology and with several tips for you to solve your problem in your home. So, let's go to the video. To start, sinus surgery is done in special cases. Not everyone has sinus surgery and has to do this surgery. But what are the indications? First, you have to have chronic sinus surgery and this is in contrast to an effective clinical treatment. That is, you have sinus surgery of difficult control, was properly medicated, performed the treatment correctly and then your otorhinolaryngologist doctor verified that you have surgical indication. Remember, we have several videos here, I will put here about sinusitis, rhinitis, flu. Sometimes it seems that everything is the same, but each one has a difference and you will be able to learn what each one is. Because a lot of people say they have sinusitis and actually, he's having sometimes some acute sinusitis cases, but he doesn't have chronic sinusitis, which is that persistent state of sinusitis. Well, taking the proper care with diagnosis, if you are a patient with chronic sinusitis, which is the one that does not respond to clinical treatment, you must have a tomography. Let's put an example of this tomography here. Inside the sinus of the face, you will see by the tomography that it has more serious alterations, which is a thickening of the bone that is seen here. In rare cases there may even be fungus inside the breasts of the face. Let's see this tomography here, this is a fungus region. So, you can have several types of chronic sinusitis and several changes in the tomography that suggest us that that chronic sinusitis has surgical indication. So, there are basically two types of sinusitis, there is the chronic sinusitis polypoid and the chronic sinusitis polyp. What is the polyp? Polyp is a hypertrophy, it abnormal tissue growth on a mucous membrane. There are several growths that generate these polyps. I will show here in this figure, look how a polyp is in the nose. So, these polyps occupy the nose, can obstruct and obstructing causing chronic sinusitis, because our nose will not be able to drain, accumulate secretion there. And the polyp, the nasal polyposis, who is polyp can be associated with several diseases, especially asthma, bronchitis. And these patients may have an allergy, aspirin, some anti-inflammatory or simply have polyp without other causes. The point is, who is polyp has a chronic sinusitis already more difficult treatment and may need special care. Now, there is that person who is chronic sinusitis, not polypoid, that which is not a polyposis and have changes in the mucus, in the formation there inside the nose, inside the drainage regions of these paranasal sinus and create a permanent state of chronic sinusitis, which is a state of sinusitis that does not improve regardless of clinical treatment. And these patients with chronic sinusitis may have indication of sinusotomy surgery, which is surgery to open the breasts, ventilate the paranasal breasts, facilitate washing, facilitate the use of medication, and improve the various symptoms of those who have chronic sinusitis, which can be headache, it can be secretion in the nose, then it can be cough. There are several symptoms that lower the patient's quality of life and surgery can add a lot in the improvement of the clinic of people who have chronic sinusitis. Here I will show, for example, a surgery of chronic sinusitis. Here, look, we're removing the polyps with a special device, we go through this, called shaver. It is a device that removes the polyps, it sucks and cuts and greatly facilitates polyposis surgery, but can be removed with tweezers too. but we tend to use technology in our favor. So, if you have the correct diagnosis, you have to operate, you are not operating for nothing, you are not operating a retention cyst, as I say in this video here, for you to know what it is, which usually has no surgical indication, you will not be operating, for example, for acute sinusitis or who has a lot of rhinitis. You are operating a chronic sinusitis, a persistent state of a chronic infection. Well, or you can have it or not polyp, the first thing before operating, you must have a tomography, and the tomography must be done outside the acute crisis. 
What is this? So, if you are having a persistent state of chronic sinusitis, the sinusitis that remains there, but you have cases that you have worsened, you get acute, you get a cold and everything. This tomography will come more altered. So, you have to do it outside the crisis. If you are flu, you will not do a tomography to check for chronic sinusitis, because there will be changes there that will confuse. You having a tomography outside the crisis, you will possibly see these changes here. What are these changes here? They are persistent changes, there will be a change in the mucosa, look at the mucosa growing here, several cells, it can be here on the front, on the ethmoid, especially here on the maxillary, and you also have bone alterations, which is forming the bone, it thickens, it gets thick, the bone, and this leaves your nose unable to ventilate, causing sinusitis. The cat eye can even accumulate within the paranasal sinus. Let's go to what surgery is interested in. After all, then, how is sinusitis surgery? As I said, many people don't even know their surgery for sinusitis. First, surgery is done mostly with the endoscope. This here, for example, this is an optic, and in this optic we can have a visualization, as if it were a camera, we will visualize here, we'll match a camera, and this camera will show on a screen all the surgery for us, and down here there is the area where we put a light. And we go through the nose, we can enter with the optic in there and visualize the sinus, the coronet, the septum, and in there we can, in addition to the optic, put tools, tweezers, right. Let's put here, for example, removing tweezers, we can operate the septum, operate the turbinate, here I will also put for you to see here, opening a sinus, removing a secretion from inside, so we can do several procedures with the optic, with the material, with tweezers, with that shaver to remove the polyps. So, we are operating usually chronic sinusitis, because most of the time are cases of sinusitis which are difficult treatments, but there are special cases, which are complications, tumors, there may also be a medication to do surgery in this region. But why? How does surgery work? How does it improve sinusitis? Look, the mucosa of our nose that is inside, it is very thin, it is almost a carpet, a thin film. Who has a lot of sinusitis, this mucosa, it thickens, it gets thick, look, it gets thick, thick and it ends up obstructing the paranasal sinus. The paranasal sinus are like rooms, shops, like that, that have a door, this door is the osteo. And if this door is closed, if the osteo is obstructed, because this mucosa is filled, inside it will not ventilate the eyelashes, which are those movements of the mucosa, the eyelashes will not be able to remove the secretion, that secretion will be accumulated there and will be in a permanent state of sinusitis. So, it's called chronic sinusitis. And as we operate and open the sinus, the air will pass there better, it will ventilate better, and it has a great advantage, you will be able to wash your nose with quality. When you throw the serum, when you do your washing, the serum will be able to get in there what was closed before. So, if the surgery was of quality, if you were well operated and if you did all the post-operative care properly, that mucosa that was thick before, it gets thinner and thinner. And then you get your sinus open, they will be able to ventilate. So, after we operate the nose, the nose will stay, look, like in this video here, it will stay with open sinus, more ventilation inside these sinus and you will be able to wash better, with higher quality, your serum and often even with medications in this serum or corticoid sprays, which will be part of your treatment. And then it will depend on each surgery, each post-operative care, each patient in a way. I'm not here to talk about a specific post-operative care treatment. But you imagine, comparing, it's like our house, let's say there are several rooms and the rooms have the door closed, the window closed, it gets more difficult to ventilate, the dust gets more caught there, 